Hey folks, in this nondescript cardboard box, I have a new 3D printer. Uh, this is the Tron XY, sometimes pronounced Tronxy, uh, X5SA 400 millimeter Core XY printer. Uh, and the reason I have this printer is that when I was looking at building my own Core XY machine, I could literally buy this entire printer for less than just the rails, pulleys, and steppers to build my own Core XY. So the plan is to build this Tron XY X5SA400 exactly as it commands in the manual and then upgrade parts later to make it the machine that I want it to be. So I'm not going to film every minute of the assembly. This is a kit printer, but it's supposedly not too complex of a kit. My other two printers are FolgerTech uh, a FolgerTech i3 2020 and a FolgerTech FT5. Those are bare bone kits. They basically just pre-bought a bill of materials and gave you a rudimentary instruction manual. Uh, so I'm hoping that this is gonna go pretty easy uh, and then we can take a look at the quality you get out of the box and what we can do on what kind of budget to upgrade it from there. So here we go with the assembly. So the, the box comes pretty well packaged. Everything is in uh, styrofoam uh, buffered sections, which is great. Uh, and it's laid out pretty well. Again, it's not just a bunch of parts loose in a box, uh, which is maybe a step up over the, the Folgers. Uh, but uh, you know, it's, um, it's still a kit, that's for sure. All right, and here's kind of everything you get in the box. Uh, you have a bunch of 2020 and 2040 extrusion. There are a couple of lead screws and guide rods. Uh, your left and right carriages. Your corner, uh, your corner pulleys for the Core XY pulley system. Looks like some kind of cable support. Two steppers for the Z axis and the steppers each for the X and Y, uh, Core XY movement. T washers for the um, threaded rod and, and smooth rod. They give you some tools, which is kind of nice. This is cable wrap, GT2 cable. This is the hot end. Um, one of the complaints with the non-pro version, this is the non-pro version, is that the, the rail system, or I guess the, the movement system in general, uh, uses just these basic, um, V-slot bearings, or these V-slot washers, whatever you call them, wheels that, that ride in the V-slot. Uh, the Pro version upgrades those rails uh, to a, a kind of a, a, like rods that sit on the side of the, the 2020 extrusion, uh, which is better, it's better than this for sure, uh, but it is like one step below the carriage style linear rails, like the high wind style, um, what is it, M12H or whatever they called, uh, you know, the, the, the small bearing based linear rails. That's where I intend to end up. And that's why, one of the reasons I didn't go with the Pro is that I'm going to be replacing this rail system uh, with those, those linear rails at some point in the future. So why spend the money on a moderate upgrade when I have a full upgrade coming in the future? Uh, but this is actually the Titan style extruder. I thought this only came on the, the Pro version. It's, it's actually nicer than I thought and it's a very good clone of the Titan. Uh, or like, it, it feels like a substantial clone of the Titan. So, um, you know, this might resurface as part of the direct drive or maybe on another printer. Uh, so better than I thought in the non-pro package, I thought this was going to be pro only. Uh, then you have the base supports for the Z motors. Uh, so the boards, wirings, all that stuff is in there. Uh, 24 volt power supply. Some of the older X5SAs, the smaller non-400 version, I think the original version of those came with 12 volt power supplies and they struggled to, to warm the heated bed. Uh, 24 volts should have an easier time, although I do hear that that bed isn't great for ABS temperatures. It will get there over time, um, but um, you know you kind of want to stick more with PLA, PETG, uh, probably in like the 60, 70 degree range is probably where that's going to realistically top out. This is just like a, a, a blue channel. Uh, it fills the 2020 channel. To me, it's more aesthetics than use, so I probably will not even use it. A little tiny bit of test filament, um, so no, no big loss there, and that's kind of it. Uh, so this shouldn't be too complex. Uh, you know, a lot of screws, uh, you know, a, a lot of assembly, but nothing that looks too tricky. So let's go ahead and put it together. 
Uh, so here we are, the build is complete and a few test prints have gone through it. Uh, first, I'm gonna say don't do what I did. I, I got excited about the printer arriving. I went out to Tron XY site a few days before it got here, downloaded the latest build manual so I could kind of go through it, make sure I you know what I, was, what I was expecting. And that's the manual I tried to follow when I actually built the machine. Uh, but it turns out they iterate quite often on this device and uh, the power supply was different, the LCD was different, the bed was a little bit different, the Z-mount brackets were a little bit different. Uh, they were all just minor differences from the documentation that having built printers before wasn't such a big deal, but if you haven't, you know, if you don't have the same experience with 3D printers uh, and you're trying to follow the, the documentation word for word, which you should do, what you find online is not going to be what's best for your printer. They include an SD card that does have all of the documentation and that did line up almost exactly with the hardware included with this printer. Uh, the only difference was the filament sensor indicated in the documentation doesn't exactly match what I received uh, and the filament sensor that I did receive doesn't perfectly line up with the extruder. Uh, so I think that this was a packaging mistake by Tron XY and that the wrong filament sensor was included. So it's an aluminum build plate, a 400 by 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter aluminum build plate. I don't like, I'm not a fan of aluminum build plates to begin with because they, as they heat and cool, aluminum changes dimension and that's what causes warping overall. And that's why you have things like mesh bed leveling. So instead of sticking the big sticker onto the aluminum plate, which is going to warp eventually and you're gonna to wanna to replace this surface eventually, uh, then you're gonna to have to peel off that, you know, the surface from the aluminum plate, clean off all the glue, it's a big mess. So don't bother, I put it on glass and I put the, uh, uh, the glass clipped onto the aluminum build plate. Uh, the problem is the bed leveling sensor included with the printer is an inductive one. Even this very thin glass is a bit too thick for the inductive sensor to pick up reliably. Uh, so I did put a spot of copper tape uh, right where the, the sensor, um, the, the Z homing location for the sensor uh, is right there. So I do have a little bit of copper tape so it'll pick that up. Now to give you some idea of the complexity this printer's manual, I believe, was 28 pages long, uh, and I think it was like 13, 14 steps, something like that. Uh, compared to my FT5 manual, I downloaded the latest version of that manual, because that one also iterates over time. Uh, I believe it's 92 pages right now. Um, and of those, you know, 13, 14 pages of the Tron XY manual was dedicated to the actual build, and then the rest was, you know, marketing fluff, bomb, troubleshooting, that kind of stuff. Uh, like. 88 pages of that FT5 build manual was, was build instructions. And then if you compare on the other side to something like the Ender 5, which is a bit more mature kit uh, with maybe a bit more QC and a bit more uh, uh, refinement on the instructions, I wanna say that there were only like six pages of instructions total. After assembling the frame, I'm finding that the frame, it's sturdy in the, like the Z axis. Uh, there is this big 2040, um, uh, 2040 extrusion to keep it from leaning, uh, I guess that'd be the Y, from leaning to and from uh, the Y axis. Uh, 
it is not super great in kind of the XY stability. If I pick up and move this, uh, this, this 90 degree angle here uh, is going to shift a bit. So every time I move the thing, I find that I'm kind of re-squaring it and making sure it's all uh, in the right spot. Uh, that can be easily remedied by uh, uh, 2020 corners. Uh, I have plenty of those. Uh, I did want to build this and show it off stock before I put anything else on it, but I will immediately be adding aluminum 2020 corners. Uh, you can also 3D print brackets um, that, that sit on the outside of the extrusion. You'll have to watch where you put those because these rails are the uh, um, they are the track for the uh, the carriages, so you can't really put a big extrusion or a big uh, plate here uh, because it will interfere with the uh, the, the carriage itself. Uh, the motor mounts aren't great. Uh, they, uh, they are just kind of a single flat piece of it. It looks kind of like acrylic, but then like the sides make it seem like it may be some kind of other composite material. Uh, but you can see a little flex in the motor mounts. I'll likely be printing new motor mounts pretty soon. Uh, the wires are a bit of a mess. I haven't done any wire management or anything like that yet either. Uh, but overall, uh, you know, it, it's kind of worked just fine. I did use base Cura that does now include a Tron XY 400, uh, X5SA 400 profile. They included their own branded version of Cura on the SD card, uh, which is not something I have any interest in using whatsoever. Uh, and they did include just a little bit of filament and I did pop out two test prints, uh, the standard XYZ block uh, that came out as good as you could expect, especially for an untuned uh, printer. Uh, and then a benchy. The detail was fine. Uh, some retraction needs to be changed. All right, so I've been playing with the printer for a few days now and uh, done a number of the upgrades that I talked about. Uh, added a bunch of bracing, so a lot of uh, aluminum corner brackets as well as some, uh, uh, some 3D printed plastic brackets where necessary. Uh, added the Octopi with a camera. So one of the issues with the Tronxy Core XY printer is, is that they use these stacked pulleys uh, and then these you know, shared axle pulleys um, on their carriages, which means in their default configuration, the important belts, so this belt leading up to the carriage and this belt leading up to the carriage, um, are not perfectly parallel to the axis. Um, and by replacing the motor mount with a much more substantial motor mount that moves the engine out about four and a half millimeters and replacing the pulley system, or actually washering the pulley system so that it's over about four and a half millimeters means that that is almost perfectly in line on each side. One of the things that I found was this cable chain kind of drooped over time and you'd have to retighten, kind of readjust it and retighten these screws. And even then, the some of the sections at the front of the cable chain uh, would start to slip out a little bit. Uh, so I have this little uh, uh, kind of little helping hand to help keep the uh, the cable chain from drooping down. The hooking up Octoprint was a little bit tricky. It looks like uh, Tronxy is using a unique firmware that doesn't quite comply to standards. Uh, when you first connect the Tronxy to the Octoprint, it'll come up with an error message in Octoprint saying, hey man, this thing doesn't work right. Install this plugin and by the way, tell Tronxy that they're bad, bad boys for not complying to standards. I did run some tests on the heated bed and uh, it wasn't exactly stellar. Uh, now this is comparing it to the silicone heater on my FT5, it's only a 300 millimeter square, uh, but it is only a 12 volt silicone heater uh, instead of the 24 volts aluminum heater that's in the uh, in the, the trunk seat. At 50 degrees, it took just under two minutes for the silicone heater to come up to temperature, uh, whereas it took about four minutes for the, the, the trunk seat. Uh, it took about five minutes for the silicone heater to reach 70. Uh, it took just over 10 minutes uh, for the trunk seat to hit 70. And 95 degrees uh, took about nine minutes, nine and a half minutes for the silicone heater uh, to get up to 95 degrees and the trunk seat never kind of made it. I cut it off after about a half an hour where it looked like that curve was, was pretty much leveling off. So if you're printing ABS, this may not be the right printer for you, at least not with that heat bed. Uh, I'll probably end up uh, upgrading the heat bed at some point in the future. Until then, I'll have to stick to my FT5 for ABS. The Built-in build surface, the one that Tronxy sends you, uh, is not impressive. It, it's fine for adhesion. It's the standard cheap 
sticker style, you know, not quite build tack type of uh, 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 build surface. Uh, it's very sensitive to a heated hot end. I've already drugged the hot end across it a couple of times and, and scarred it up pretty good. Uh, so you know, as a starting surface, it's fine. As a temporary surface, it's fine. Uh, and it'll have to suffice until I get in some kind of PEI sheet or something a little bit better. So what can we say about this printer? Uh, well, first, it's cheap. Uh, even if you only wanted the hardware, like the aluminum extrusions, the stepper motors, the belts and pulleys, none of the electronics or the fancy extruders or stuff like that, the entire printer is still cheaper than just those parts bought separately. Second, it uses Core XY movement, which is generally regarded as the most accurate and efficient movement system, especially for lightweight extruders. It limits ghosting and enables higher print speeds. This printer has a lot of features. It comes standard with a heated bed, an inductive leveling sensor, a filament runout sensor, a color LCD, and these are pretty standard on most printers nowadays, but it's great to see them retained on a cheap printer like this. And even though it uses an overly long Bowden tube, a clone extruder, and a cheaper hot end, the quality is pretty good with a little bit of tweaking. My test cube was pretty close to dimensionally accurate, and I don't have any layer shifting or extrusion issues with basic PLA. As for cons, corners were obviously cut on many of the parts. It uses basic V-Track wheels for sliders, basic acrylic motor mounts, uh, a no-name board with cheap, although quiet, steppers. Also, the frame lacks rigidity, and without aftermarket reinforcement, you'll want to keep a close eye on how square everything is. Even when squared off, there are a number of basic tuning items that should be considered, like better alignment of the Core XY cables, cutting down the Bowden tube distance, and a little bit of experimentation with the retraction distance. In short, this is an amazing piece of kit to cheaply kickstart a customized large format printer. It's not a great out of the box beginner's printer and stepping up to a Creality or Prusa will likely end up costing less when factoring in frustration. So I think this is where I'm gonna end this video. Uh, I do have a lot more upgrades planned. I've kind of done everything that was simple and just a, you know, a quick 3D print or, or a quick adjustment to the printer and it prints very well as it is right now. My next step, I hope to get the linear rail in pretty soon for the X-axis and I think from there I can put on a, uh, a, a direct drive with maybe a BMG or an Arrow or something like that and then I'm gonna to to do something about those, those build surfaces. So hopefully that PEI sheet will be coming in before too long. I'll already have the glass plate and we'll We'll see how things go from there. So if you liked this video, hit that like button. If you liked my other videos, then please subscribe and I will see you in the next one.